This is Ian R. Crane. It's day 44 of the Balkan blockade. It's the seventh week of the campaign to prevent an agenda being unleashed upon this country, which is in effect chemical warfare against the general population. With the end of the school holidays, the families that have been camped here for much of the period have now gone home, the children have gone back to school. Some of the tents have been shut down for the week and obviously people will be coming back at the weekends. Nonetheless, the permanent camp still numbers something in the region of about 100 or so people here. But the tactics that are being employed are differing greatly. Earlier in the week we saw Nikki Sanger chain herself to the gate into the well site. Uh, the following day Rob climbed onto a tanker that was leaving the well site. And yesterday Jamie set up a tripod in the middle of the road, effectively closing the road for some five and a half hours. Today a number of trucks have come through and in the last case nobody stood in front of the truck. So a phalanx of some 50 police officers surrounding the truck escorted the truck from the top of the hill down to the gate onto the well site. Nonetheless, ITV have been here filming for a program that's due to be broadcast on the 19th of September. I would have to acknowledge that the demeanour of the ITV film crew has been much more respectful than the attitude taken by the crew that came down to film the BBC One show a few weeks ago. I took the opportunity to take 20 minutes to speak to the director of the programme and uh, she assured me that the programme would present balance. Uh, of course I declined to participate in the programme because it is recorded and uh, I'm not about to present my head on the proverbial silver platter to the editing suite. Meanwhile, it's been an interesting week. The local parish council here at Borkham have uh, formally acknowledged that they did not have the skills or the expertise to review the planning application when it was originally submitted by Quadrilla, despite the fact that Quadrilla have withdrawn their application for an extension beyond September the 28th. It is becoming apparent to me that the strategy of the government and of the industry is now to establish planning permission for anything up to a dozen locations. The intention being to split the protectors and also of course the assumption is that people in the local communities will not be sufficiently aware to mount a similar blockade to that which has been here at Borkham for six and a half weeks. That's something that we have to change. Over the next few weeks I shall certainly be participating in a number of public meetings and also meetings that have been specifically arranged to raise awareness of the fracking abomination in the target communities. Unfortunately, all of this comes at a cost and the fracking awareness campaign is certainly in need of financial support. Fuel costs, accommodation, time spent on research unfortunately comes at a price. So if you are able to contribute in any way, shape or form, please donate to the Fracking Awareness Campaign. The link is on my website, ianrcrane.com, or call me on 0207 558 8869. We know that many of you would be here with us, but we know that's not possible. But there is an increasing band of people who are able to take the time to ensure that the word is spread around the country it is not, and that this abomination is not permitted to take off in the UK. This is Ian R. Crane at Borkham on Friday, September 6th, 2013. Okay, this is our... Uh our rig up to prove that the government's been lying to us about there being no gas in this water bore. This water bore's now been running for a few minutes and uh, as you can see it's burning gas. This would be the gas that the government maintains isn't present, that the Queensland scientists um, at a couple of laboratories have said there's no gas in this water bore. So 
every Queenslander can feel quite confident in the fact that the government's tested these gas bores and said that there's no leakage. They can be so confident that they're probably corrupt or lying. Corrupt, lying and incompetent. One or the, it's got to be something. Yep. We've got BG Group, QGC, on one side of our property and Origin Energy on the other side. Their coal seam gas tenements divide our property in two. We do not have any coal seam gas infrastructure on our property, or so we thought, but this flame is coming from the water from our registered stock and domestic water bore. I think that is the most damning. It's not a huge amount of gas, but it is so damning because it's there all the time. Both coal seam gas companies have been heavily extracting water from the aquifers under us, leaving us with very little water and more and more gas. <laughs> that was funny. And to the Queensland Government, the Queensland Gas Inspectors and the Australian Water Testing Laboratories, do you really want to keep on lying? The Queensland Government, with its inadequate testing regime, now needs to retest every piece of coal seam gas infrastructure in Queensland again, with us boys to make sure you're doing it right.